Tell you about the one, the guy who wanted to work at the zoo or not? Yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> the zoo one. This is the the lady who calls up the. Uh, this is gonna sound strangely familiar. She calls up the zoo. And she said, um, "I think your gorilla escaped." And uh, the zookeeper says, "No, that's it. Wait, our gorilla escaped. It's not here." Yeah. She goes, well, "How did you know?" Well, it's it's in. A, the tree in my backyard. Okay, I'll be right over. So the zookeeper arrives, and uh, he's got a uh, a net, a gun, and a dog with him. And he says, "Okay, now this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna climb up the tree. I'm gonna shake the branches. The gorilla's gonna fall out of the uh, the tree. The dog will start biting him to keep him in place, and then you just throw the net over him." And she said, well, what, what's the dog for? Or what, what's the thing I didn't leave out? The gun. What's the gun for? He said, well, that's in case I fall out of the tree, someone has to shoot the dog. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we are made in the image of God. And one of the, and that makes us God-like, right? If we are made in the image of God, we have these godlike qualities. And one of the most godlike qualities that we have that we forget about is that we are creators as well. And we just saw something really amazing right now. That, that was just a, a perfect uh, video leading into this discussion on, on art. Chesterton writes about art a lot. We are, we are creators. We get to do this godlike thing of making things. And that and that's where art comes in. Art is our opportunity to be creators. And just like you learned last night that the truth is paradoxical, well, art is paradoxical too. Uh, when you see a masterpiece, when you see a masterpiece for the first time, you feel like you've seen it before. That's a paradox. And when you see it the next time, you feel like you've never seen it before. You feel like you're seeing it for the first time. Chesterton says you can look at a thing 999 times and still not see it for the first time. There's this, uh, this paradoxical quality to great art that has to be both strange and familiar. It has to be something distinctive about it that sets it apart and yet there has to be something immediately recognizable that we can connect to, that we can relate to. It has to be strange and familiar. There's two parts to it. That's why, that's why the, the image of the scissors is perfect. A scissors doesn't work if there's only one sizz. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have both to have a good scissors. And, uh, and if, it's, if art is only strange, it fails as art. But if it's only familiar, it also fails as art. And so that's what the artist is always trying to achieve. And Chesterton says that there is a line that passes from the eye to the heart without going through the intellect. That's what great art does. You, you are struck by its greatness, by its beauty, before you even realize it. You know it's beautiful before you know it's beautiful. And the intellect has to catch up afterwards and figure out why that thing is so beautiful, because you already recognize its beauty. And that's interesting, because that's what the art critic's job is. Uh, we've gotten, in the modern world, because of the, of the absolute degeneration of the arts, <coughs> Art critics 
are always telling the audience what they're supposed to be feeling. But a true art critic, as Chesterton is, he tells the audience what it does feel. He just puts their, their own feelings into words. And that's why we recognize that when Chesterton's talking, he's telling the truth because we, we say, oh yeah, that's right, I recognize what he's saying. I just wish I could have said it so well myself. That's what common sense is. It's the truth that we all know to be truth, but we just haven't quite been able to articulate them so well. And we react to something beautiful because it's beautiful. We know it's beautiful. And one of the one of the essences of beauty, as Chesterton says, is perfect proportion. And perfect proportion doesn't mean complete equal balance, but there, there is some sort of a balance. But it, it's, not this, it's not this perfect equal balance, it's perfect proportion, which means, he says, that the important things are important and the unimportant things are not important. The big things are big, and the little things are little. The, the background is the background, and the foreground, the, the, the main object, is where it's supposed to be, and that, that's where it gets our focus. But everything else falls into place perfectly, and that's what proportion is. Um, and, uh, and everything really in modern art is out of proportion. The, the wrong things are emphasized, and the most important things are not even emphasized. They may not even be present in art. And, and Chesterton says, you know, we, we make things beautiful because we love them. God created a, a beautiful world because it was an act of love. And he, Chesterton says the modern world is ugly because we do not love the modern world. We build ugly buildings because we do not love the thing we're doing. We don't love our, our craft. Oh, you, you saw something just absolutely gorgeous right now. This craftsman made a pair of scissors beautiful. And he obviously loved what he was doing. And we strive for beauty because it is an act of love. And what was the other thing that I said last night? It was paradox, what was the other thing? Wonderful. Wonder, yeah. Remember how I said that one of the things was difficult and the other one was easy? Which one was the difficult thing and which was the easy one? Anybody? <laughs> Which was the difficult one and which was the easy one? Wonder is more difficult. Now that's a paradox, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the paradox, is, when I was starting to explain it, it seemed a little difficult. But once we got down to it, it makes sense. Yeah, there's this contradictory nature to truth. And there's this ultimately contradictory nature to God. The cross itself is a sign of contradiction. It's eternity contradicting time and life contradicting death. It's got, a, it's got this contradiction right at its center. And, uh, and we, we see that contradictory nature in the scissors. We see it in everything. But this, so that was an easy thing to, to, to comprehend, even though it seemed difficult. But wonder, which seems so obvious, is the hard thing to do. It's hard to maintain our wonder. It's hard to, to really always have that sense of astonishment. But we just got astonished at a guy making a pair of scissors, didn't we? <laughs> that, was, that was perfect. Um, what, what are we doing when we are creating? What are we doing when we are creating? We're, we're taking an idea and trying to manifest it. Whether it's a painting, or a script, or a, great uh, uh, roasted garlic butternut squash soup. <laughs> We're trying to manifest an idea. We are trying to make the word into flesh. 
That's what an artist does. And the ultimate artist did that when he made himself in the flesh. There's no such thing as art for art's sake. There's no such thing as art for art's sake. That was an idea that came into play in the 90s, the 1890s. Uh, that was, sorry, that was my fault. All right. <laughs> That's a sign. It just fell over. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the idea of art for art's sake is is really a, a degeneration, and and that's why that that era was known as as the era of decadence. It was it was a decay, and it's, it starts with when art has. Uh, become so disconnected from truth that it that it, it really is 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 completely foundered. Mm -hmm. Chesterton says a man cannot have the energy to produce good art without having the energy to wish to pass beyond it. A small artist is content with art. A great artist is content with nothing except everything. <laughs> and then he says, you never work so well for art's sake as when you are working for something else. The great artist is always pointing to something beyond his art. And of course, he's pointing to God. The great artist is always doing something eternal. And if the art is not for the glory of God, if we are not working for heaven's sake, says Chesterton, we are definitely working in the service of hell. And that doesn't mean that all art has to be religious art, just like, just like the scissors. It just has to be, it has to have that element of beauty, proportion, it has to reflect goodness. It has to be for something beyond itself. Anytime we're working for something beyond ourselves, it, it's an act of sacrifice, and that helps make it good. Because it's not a selfish act. The other thing about art is you have to work within the rules. You have to work within the rules. And everyone, especially in, in modern art, they tend to associate uh, Freedom of expression is, is breaking the bounds and going beyond. And that it usually results in, in another form of decay and a, and, a, and a further failure of art. Another great paradox is that freedom exists only within the rules, within the lines. Uh, and that's where you can be most creative when you're following the rules. We see it in poetry. Uh, when we threw out form, we threw out meter, we threw out rhyme, guess what else we threw out? Poetry. <laughs> <laughs> the, that's the great thing about a beautiful poem. We, we can remember it because of the form. Rhyme has, is this wonderful way of language returning upon itself. Chesterton says a good rhyme is like a homecoming because there's a sense of fulfillment when, it, when, you, when you hear a good rhyme. And, uh, and the, meter, the meter gives us a rhythm because life has a rhythm to it. And if we are, are tossing out the very forms of poetry, well, we lose what poetry is supposed to do. And the same thing with, with painting. Um, you follow the rules, you paint what's there. Uh, abstraction has has certainly uh, been a sign of decay in art, um, and and the audiences know this. People know it right away. They they know the failure of modern art when they see it, and because uh, it defies common sense. 
I talked last night about the importance of free will. That free will is what sets us aside from the animals. Sets us apart, rather, from the animals. Our free will is what um, makes us distinct as human, but what, what is the, what are we supposed to do with our free will? What are we supposed to do with our free will? We're supposed to obey. <laughs> That's a paradox. <laughs> yeah. But we are happy when we obey. We are unhappy when we disobey. We are unhappy when we use our free will against God's will. Fulfillment, peace, comes with conforming our will to God's will. But what makes it beautiful and interesting is that when we do it of our own volition, when we act willfully to obey God, and that's, that's when we, we, we have fulfillment in our souls. The artist, when he follows the rules and does something beautiful and unique within the rules, everyone benefits from it. Everyone benefits from the great work of art because the artist has followed the rules and yet he's done something new, something creative. But without the rules, it all falls apart. A great line of Chesterton's is, art like morality, consists of drawing the line someplace. <laughs> Art, like morality, consists of drawing the line someplace. <clears throat> I'm going to say it one more time. And there's a reason for that. There was a, a, a the, the husband of Chesterton's biographer was a great public speaker named Frank Sheed. He said, if you want anybody to remember anything, you have to say it three times. Because <laughs> the first time you say it, people will say, well, that, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. The second time you say it, they'll go, I, I've heard this somewhere before. <laughs> then the third time you say it, they'll go, you know, this guy's smart. He agrees with me. <laughs> <laughs> Art, like morality, consists of drawing the line someplace. Art has to be moral. It has to work within the rules. It has to be obedient. Obedient to the very skill that it represents. The great artist practices. You're going to be hearing what, is Christopher Parking going to play his guitar tonight? He's, he's a gifted artist, but he actually had to practice to be that good. <laughs> and we, we, we develop these God-given skills um, because we follow the rules. And that's what makes the art great. The failure of modern art is that it's been separated from religion. The failure of everything in our world is because it's been separated from the faith, from the truth. And, and we need to bring art back into the service of God. And that means, as Christians, becoming skilled artists and using this amazing